Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Hernandez, and welcome back to Your Health television and radio program. I am here talking today about sexually transmitted diseases. And uh, to our next guest will be Linda McGlone, who's Senior Health Educator at Monterey County Health Department. She has been working with sexually transmitted diseases and youth for over eight years. Linda, thank you for coming and joining us um, on this, this important discussion about sexually transmitted diseases. Thank you for having me, Dr. Hernandez. Great. Um, as I mentioned, we've been speaking a lot about sexually transmitted diseases, how things, uh, what the numbers are here in Monterey County and nationally. Um, but just let's go back to basics. How do you, what is a sexually transmitted disease and how do we get them? Great, great question. A sexually transmitted disease, let's just break out the three words. It's a disease that's passed through sexual contact, all right? Uh, transmitted means to spread. One person has the disease, the other person does not. They have sexual contact, and that infection, either bacterial or viral, goes from this person to this person. Okay. Great. So it sounds like it has to be person-to-person -person contact. So those myths you hear about getting it from a toilet seat or from other objects, are they true? The toilet seat is not true. Uh -uh. It has to be some sort of sexual contact, either oral sex, which is uh, penis to mouth, mouth to vagina, anal sex, penis to anus, or vaginal sex, penis to vagina. So it has to be one of those. Now, I think maybe where some of the confusion comes in is, for example, with hepatitis C. You can get hepatitis C sexually, or you can get it from a piercing yeah. or uh, tattooing. But we're focusing today on those diseases that are transmitted sexually. Right, but still the point is that there has to be um, some sort of contact, either physical contact or through fluids to, to a person's um, and, uh, body, on, on their body, or through a sore or what have you. Absolutely, their, their spread, the bacteria or the virus, are actually contained in body fluids. So that would be semen, that would be uh, vaginal fluid, or it could be blood. In that category of transmission, condoms work really well in blocking the transmission of the disease in those body fluids. Another way that you can get uh, an STD, and here now we're thinking about herpes and genital warts, is contact with infected skin. Now that sounds really straightforward. I look at my partner, he's got a sore, she's got a sore, I get up, I leave. <laughs> the problem is that that infected skin may or may not have a visible sore. So you can't just sort of check somebody out and say, no STD, yes STD. With respect to infected skin, again, think herpes and genital warts, a condom may or may not be helpful depending on where the sore is. So if the condom is between uh, the sore and your partner, um, then it would be helpful. But if the, again, if there is no visible sore, or if the condom is not covering that, yeah. for example, it's on the testicles or something like that, uh, the scrotum, then the condom doesn't do much good. The last way that, again, that bacteria or virus is passed from one person to another is fecal oral, so that would be mouth to anus. Um, here, obviously a condom doesn't come into play, but a dental dam put over the anus, again, that barrier between mouth and anus would help pre uh, prevent transmission. So you also mentioned some words that um, I, I want you to clarify. You talk about viruses and bacteria. So are STDs different types? Or they are different types. And I think for the most important takeaway between viral and bacterial is bacterial can be cured with an antibiotic. And if you're uh, diagnosed with an STD, which is usually just peeing in a cup, um, you should take your antibiotics and be sure to finish the entire course of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. When we run into troubles, when people take half of their uh, prescription or they share it with a friend because then we develop these sort of super bugs that are resistant to, um, to antibiotics. 
we said the other category is viral and the viral uh, STDs cannot be cured. Um, we can't cure the common cold, that's a virus. Mm -hmm. So things like herpes, like AIDS, are never really cured. You can manage the symptoms. We see folks like Magic Johnson doing really well after a number of years um, living with AIDS. And that's because the, the medication is extremely good, but he always has um, the risk of recurrence that is always present. Is that how you'd put it? Yeah. So you mentioned that I couldn't tell if a partner had a sexually transmitted disease all the time. What about if you're the person who's infected? Do you know if you have a sexually transmitted disease? You may or may not. It, so you can't certainly blame anyone. Many sexually transmitted diseases are without symptoms. There's no visible sign. Sometimes you'll have a, a, a discharge from the vagina, a discharge from the penis, a burning when you go to the bathroom, but sometimes there are no symptoms. And so that's why protection is always really important. And uh, as you talked about in the previous segment, fewer partners and uh, monogamous relationships. And there's always abstinence. That's the only certain way not to get an STD. Right, and then the other thing is to get tested regularly And as well. get tested, you bet. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next segment. So uh, another question, um, what about, you mentioned that you need to take, for some of the sexually transmitted diseases, diseases you need to, they are, they are curable. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you, where do you get the medication? Can you get it over the counter? Um, what is it time? Is there some special remedy that you can take at home? What, what are some of the approaches to curing um, sexually transmitted diseases? Well, you have to, as you mentioned, go get tested. And then once uh, your STD, if you have one, is diagnosed, then you'll receive uh, a prescription for an antibiotic. Um, there are... Um, we see all the TV commercials with people <laughs> running on the hills and, and frolicking and uh, saying that it's a treatment for herpes. That's simply a, a way of managing the symptoms. It is not a cure. Um, I suspect that stuff is over the counter, isn't it? No, I think that's prescription that as well. That one is prescription as well. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So it all depends. So the most important thing is that you do get tested, go to a health center or your provider, find out what you have first before you start uh, trying to take care of your concerns or the symptoms at home. And then once you find out what it is, then you, you guide your, your approach to the illness by what your health care provider says. Absolutely. And um, you have to, um, again, follow the directions of the doctor and you may not know if you have an STD. Um, so again, that message of getting tested is really important. So you mentioned some of the symptoms of sexually transmitted diseases. You also mentioned that some of them are not uh, symptomatic, where people have an infection and may go on with the infection for a long time without knowing about it. What are some of the medical effects of, of having an infection in your body in terms of your health? I'll go, I want to mention the medical effects, but I, what I was thinking about is that it's important to um, be mindful of your health and watch for changes. Yes. Any sort of change, any, you know, if you see a fluid in your underpants or if anything that seems different, you really should go get checked. Mm -hmm. And for young people or for pe people who are under the age of uh, uh, 40, 45, these treatments and this diagnosis is free under family pact so don't worry about a false alarm but if you see any change and that's true for cancer that's true for a number of things sure. you know your body best if you see something you should go get it checked so the medical consequences of an std are and i think you alluded to them earlier um, you may not be able to have a family when you are ready to have a family mm -hmm. Okay, if you've allowed the infection to go untreated, it starts to sort of clog up your pipes. Uh, so the semen isn't coming out or the um, 
sperm isn't coming out because those little tiny tubes that the sperm travel through have been infected and may have closed up. Uh, for women, it's the same thing. Uh, or they may suffer from pelvic inflammatory disease. And that's really heartbreaking. When you're a teen, I think, you think, well, you know, what's the problem? I, I'm embarrassed. I don't want to go get checked. I don't want to go get treatment. But then on down the road, when you're 20 and 25 and your mother-in-law is saying, hey, when are you two going to have some kids? And you really want a family. You're ready for a family. You may not be able to. So we mentioned that. Um, pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, STDs can also be spread to newborns. And this, I think, is one of the, the saddest aspects of, of an STD that goes untreated. So a woman having a vaginal birth may expose uh, the infant uh, to the STD as it travels through um, the vagina during birth, mm -hmm. or it can be exposed uh, in the uterus, in the womb, uh, through the exchange of blood. So that, that I think, is one of the most unfair uh, aspects of all. Genital warts, we didn't talk much about those. Yeah. Um, they can be frozen off or removed, but they sometimes come back. Uh, but that is the, that's the treatment for those, and it's, it's, uh, it's not a certain prognosis that, that they will never come back. Wow, so it's really important. One of the points that you mentioned is that, that sexually transmitted diseases can affect you now and later, exactly. can affect you, your family, your children. So this is a really important topic that we need to talk about um, because it does have an impact on the whole community. Absolutely, and I appreciate you hostessing this show and being straightforward about the information. It's sometimes awkward. It's hard for parents to talk to their kids about this. It's hard for kids to talk to each other about this, but it's got to get out there. Yes. Well, I think you also uh, make a good point that, that there are services, and we'll be talking more about um, testing in the ne next segment, but there are services for both testing and treatment out in the community, so we can have some control. So we've heard about the numbers. We've heard a little bit about the symptoms. Our next segment will be on, on uh, testing and getting a little bit more um, knowing where we can get the information for learning about ex, uh, sexually transmitted diseases. So um, Linda, just thank you very much for coming. Um, is there one last bit of information or one uh, take-home message, one message that you want uh, our viewers to, to know about here? I think people can feel stigmatized if they find that they have an STD. There's a, there's a great deal of shame associated with that. And as Christy said in the previous segment, I think she did a great job. Um, it happens. Uh, that's why you have to use protection, get tested, and be honest with your partner. You have to communicate with your partner. And if you are infected, then stop having sex until you're cured, the antibiotics have uh, worked. You have to be honest, and it is, it is, it's an embarrassing, it's a hard topic. Any, any particular tricks that you would say to be able to bring up those topics with your health care provider or your partner? Well, with your health care provider, we'd hope that you had an honest relationship, and that's particularly challenging for a teen to talk to an adult. Um, Teenagers must try and find somebody that they can talk to, a health care provider that they do feel comfortable being open and honest with. With a partner, um, if you're in a committed relationship, then um, if you have a long-term condition like herpes, um, you need to tell that other person. And that's part of an honest dialogue that should occur, yeah. in, you know, occur in any honest relationship. And then the other person may make the decision, okay, thank you, I probably don't want to go on with the relationship, or let's work with it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like honesty is the best practice, whether you're talking to your provider or to your partner. And again, one of the things um, that Christy mentioned is uh, that I want to emphasize, too, is that healthcare providers um, have a confidential relationship with, uh, with the patient, no matter what the age is of that patient or that client. So um, that is where it's, it's a safe time to, to give that information to your provider if you have a concern about your um, 
symptoms that you may be experiencing or any sort of exposure that you might have had. So again, thank you very much, Linda. My thank pleasure. You have a busy schedule, as I know, so I appreciate you. appreciate your time <laughs> and your honesty. We're, we're going to take a short break now. And again, I'm Dr. Lisa Hernandez, and this is your health show, radio, and television program.